Today we're going to 3D print a fire pit. We developed the design using Autodesk Fusion 360 software. This is an incredibly powerful 3D modeling software and it's free to download. This design may look complex, but it's actually only made of three different modules. This is great because that means we only need to 3D print three different parts. After modeling these diamond shapes, we faceted the tops so that they came up to the point like a pyramid. Now some of the pieces for the fire pit were a little bit too big for a 3D printer. So we separated them into pieces and added little pegs so that it'd be easy to glue them back together. We used software called Cura to prepare the files for printing. The Robo R2 is a very easy to use 3D printer that I highly recommend for beginners. We printed the pieces using PLA filament. This is an affordable and versatile filament that's great for simple projects like this. We glued the pieces together using a glue called MaxiCure from Bob Smith Industries. Yes, that's the real name. This glue came with an accelerator that we sprayed onto the seams and then rubbed in. 3D printers deposit the filament in little layers, which leaves ridges on the finished prints. We wanted the fire pit pieces to be nice and smooth, so we used some Bondo all-purpose putty to smooth out all these little ridges on our finished prints. After thoroughly mixing the two parts of the Bondo, we then spread it and pushed it into all the seams and cracks in these prints. Once the Bondo had dried, we sanded the whole thing nice and smooth. Now that we have the three finished pieces all nice and smooth, we're ready to start making the silicone molds. We hot glued the prints down to a piece of melamine and then used other pieces of melamine to make a perimeter around it. Now I've had some 3D prints float up on me before, so I also added a few screws from the underside. To make silicone molds for concrete projects, I'd like to use a product called Moldstar 30. Now I had some of this product left over from some previous projects, and it had been sitting around for about a year and a half, and I don't think I had quite sealed the bucket all the way, and it had kind of gone bad. It's a two-part mix, and the white part, which is the activator, had really settled and become kind of chalky, and never thoroughly quite mixed into the blue. After letting the silicone cure 24 hours, I removed the melamine and pulled out the silicone. Most of the mold was nice and rubbery, but there was these little white flakes in it that didn't quite ever fully harden, and I wasn't really sure if this was gonna work that well for casting concrete. So I opened up some new buckets of Moldstar 30 and used my drill and a mixing paddle to make sure that the activator was all broken up and nice and smooth before thoroughly mixing the two parts together. This mold came out great and I was ready to move on to the concrete part. To make the fire pit blocks, I just used Quickrete 5000, which is my go-to DIY concrete mix. It has a really nice color and only costs about $5 for an 80 pound bag. I spooned the concrete into the molds and made sure to push it down into all the corners. I used my orbital sander to vibrate the molds and try to get out as many of the air bubbles as possible. I let the concrete cure for 24 hours before popping the pieces out of the mold. I repeated this process 11 more times until I had enough pieces to complete the fire pit. I let all the pieces cure for two weeks and thoroughly dry out before assembling them into the fire pit. Now large pieces of concrete can store moisture and crack when exposed to heat, but these pieces are small enough that the heat can dissipate out of them. They're also really low to the ground. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, you could try making these blocks out of wood. I would suggest using some 2x lumber and using a belt sander to get the facets nice and straight. From there you could seal it with a polycrylic and then make the silicone molds. For additional information, check out our website, and if you want to see what we're working on next, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks! Bye!